before it happens, you can get an entry on it. So the price went up. As soon as it closed up, it went back down. Where do you think it went back down into, guys? I missed. We, I was going to check an entry on that, to be honest. Uh, it came back too. You can see. Let me turn off this and this. Guys, please mute your mics. So you can see that the price came back after it formed the breaker block on the 5 and it came back to the midpoint of this order block, sorry, of this breaker block, respected it. Here we have an a broader block as well, respected it and then just moved from here, right? So what you could do is, this here shows that algor there's algorithmic uh, repricing in the market already, right? So the algorithm already repressed to this before it happened. And we planned it before it happened as well. So it came back here, you could have had an entry here, and then you could target, of course, the next area of liquidity. So people who've been shorting from the morning, they'll have they would drop their stop loss from here to 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 here. All right. So and now they all got stopped out, and then this all here becomes normally a low resistance run, right? All these highs will be low resistance. However, Dixie is bullish, so we have to keep that in mind, guys. That's why I didn't take an entry on this, even though it planned out any other day. I mean, yesterday, you can you saw me, most of my recent entries was as soon as we close up, as soon as the price goes above and get a one minute candle close above the breaker, I entered on the retest on the one minute. It doesn't, it, and I refer back to the five minute. The reason I didn't do it right now is because Dixie is bullish. Right now, it's just consolidating, but I assume that it's going to take out that high for it. So this here rally, this rally here can be a suspect rally. We can call this a suspect rally. And... But price never just jumps out of nowhere. It always does specific things, right? So we're back on the five minute. What do you think happened? Why did price come back here and then start reject? Because guys, we have this volume imbalance. Now, supply, demand, uh, read. All I, see, all I see is circling cubes. Can you guys see my screen? Can you guys write in the chat? I hope there's no problem. Can you guys write in the chat if there's, you can see my screen because Ziggy said it's not. All right, you can see. Ziggy, I don't know, bro. <laughs> um, you can see. All right. So you see how the price came back down. You see how I told you that the price, I wouldn't be long in. Why? Because this can be a suspect rally. Why? To fill this insufficiency to continue bring us, bringing us down. Why? Because the price, like Dixie is bullish, guys. Dixie, you don't want to be chasing price. You want to know price never does anything randomly. The only reason it pumped all the way back here is to fill this a uh, volume imbalance. And here, what do we have? High, higher, high, high, higher, high, lower, low. So this green red candle here becomes a breaker block. This whole thing, and you can because since if, since it's too big, and we're very bearish, you can just use the body, right? And you can see it came back to the tick, and to fill this volume imbalance, use it as support. Went all the way back down into the breaker. So now we have bullish bullish ideas and we have bearish ideas. Uh, this is where you should be trading, right? Dix is now bullish, so we should be looking for shorts. And I'm going to go over that in a second, why we are very bearish. But uh, we're still finding support at the breaker. This is the breaker. If I put this on, you can see that this is still a breaker. We came back to the middle of a couple of times. Now, boy, now, uh, friends, um, and you can see the price came back. Let me turn this off again. Came back all the way down to this volume imbalance to fill this one, right? In the same candle, it went to fill this one. And this one now in normal retail supply and demand they think huh we have a volume imbalance price went up it filled it and went away from it okay that volume imbalance is done with no this what separates the idea of ict from the rest of the world these gaps always been there for many years since the, the start of the the, the, the in digital trading world right all these gaps volume imbalance if features everybody can recognize them but the way ict differentiates these from his ideas is that they are still algorithmically uh, algorithm uh, they're, they're still refer they are still a reference point for the algorithm to refer back in time so this feg let's say this is a bullish where is this let's say we have an feg this feg here can still be used for up to 20 days based on the ipda so the interbank price delivery alg algorithm it's just another fancy word of saying the algorithm you can still use this nwg you can plot it for this week you can still use it for three months ahead the price will still you can go back and test it by backtest, I mean just go and check what's going on. You can see that the price still respects these things, the top, the middle, and the low, right? So, and these, uh, the order blocks, FEGs, breaker blocks, they're not zones, all right? They're not supply and demand, again, in another stance. And what I mean by that is that there are, I draw a rectangle, I know, I know I draw a rectangle, and so does most of the indicators. 
the idea is there are three points of reference, right? The low, the midpoint, the high. The algorithm will refer to these all the time, all right? So we have this breakup block as well. You can see Lux Algo drawing it for us. There. So you can see that the price, if I just rearrange this to here, you can see price came back, respected this. First, it respected our first breaker block. Now we respected the second, the, the original. So you, you expect that the price should not become, oops, you should be expecting that price shouldn't be coming back to this area, right? It shouldn't. And now we also, since we swept the previous session low, we should be looking for longs. And we are the daily vol volume imbalance, which is also a bullish area. And uh, so we are here. Uh, everything is looking bullish except Dixie. Now Dixie is dumping. Dixie is going back to its uh, gravitating towards its breaker block. Let me just bring this up here. You guys can see Dixie is coming to its uh, breaker block. So we might find support here, but while this market drops all the way back here, and we have these equal lows here, market uh, is going to find it's going to find a really good displacement back upwards. And uh, that's why this market on ES right now is pumping, right? So let's have a look what the rest of the markets are doing. So on ES, we formed a low. Lower low, higher high, right? So we took our low. What about NQ? Let's see if we can find any more institutional order flow. So NQ didn't take it's this low. So if I if I were to oops. So we have ES at the top. And we have NQ here. And we have Dow. What's Dow's sign again? YM. One second, guys. Where's the Discord? There you go. So, this is called a SMT, all right? So, here, YM took its low. It made a lower low. The same low, this low, was also taken by ES. However, NQ. Where are you this? One sec. It's just too big. All right. Here, however, NQ didn't take it slow, right? right. So we have a SMT diversion. This is tipping, this is the algorithm tipping its toes that the market will start to show signs of reversal before it happens. You're already aware of it, right? So both ES and NQ made a lower low, but NQ is still showing, uh, still holding, right? So uh, we would expect something to bring us back up. But until Dix all right, Dixie is back at its breaker block. So let me just go back into ES. So Dixie made this huge dump back into breaker block, right? We want to see, do we hold this? Do we hold this breaker block or do we close below it and use it as inverse? If we close below it, then that will give room for ES, for our long, uh, uh, for our um, uh, awaited long to give us an entry, not an entry, but allow us to start pumping up, right? And now you can see we still respect in bearish, uh, bearish PD arrays. We have this volume imbalance. We're still still holding it. You can see these are five minute candles. Imagine on the one minute we had. We also have this breaker block. We also have what? We also have this fair value gap. Oops. And we have another fair value gap right here. So annoying. Something like that. All right. So this here, this area here is a really strong area that the price would like to, um, we would like the price to, once it goes above it, then we can be sure, right? But right now Dixie is making, it went below the breaker block, but a lot can happen in a, in one more minute. So we have one more minute. We want to see if we close below this breaker. If this, if this happens, great. We also have this bullish FVG. So, I think longs on ES should be great, right? Once we get over this area, all these once keep is this if Dixie keeps lot making is keep going down, uh, then all these highs on ES will be easy to take. So, for those who didn't take an entry, you had an opportunity now. So we had sweep, FVG, Chosh, where's the Chosh, Chosh, FVG. 
this here would be a unicorn entry became really shy of it but i told you i wouldn't expect this whole fvg to be filled why because we've got breakers multiple breakers here that can hold the price we also have why did the price stop right there right we have volume imbalance as well So here is a really strong area the price may not want to keep, what would like to keep open, right? So the price is still here. Dixie is still, let's have a look at Dixie. And the way I use Dixie, guys, is we're using Dixie as an indicator, like, so instead of having an indicator on your chart, you just use Dixie as an indicator because if Dixie is dumping, then ES and NQ and all the other assets like gold and all foreign for, uh, forex pairs. Will be pumping so dixie is looking now very bearish we closed managed to close below the breaker in one candle and this feg so this i want to see us come back here use this as support as resistance and continue going down maybe till this feg or this volume imbalance there or to the low right so now this is good for us because now we can plan our trade on es so we at the breaker so you can have an entry here anyway here inside the breaker is good um I might take a long, but I missed my entry. Well, if it comes back in one more time, I might take a long. Dix is still bearish. What about YM? YM is still chilling here, right? YM is still chilling here. We also have a Chosh, sweep Chosh. And we have this FVG which we close below it, which is not good. What about NQ? NQ is same thing. Sweep, Chosh, and this FEG here. You can still use that FEG. Extend it out. Price came back into it. So here we had a valid entry on NQ. And we're going to expect some resistance at this breaker. But since Dixie is dumping, all these become low resistance. So we can probably go to London easily, right? So I might take a long and see. I like what I'm seeing, but today is a really bad day, right? It's Friday and it's holidays. There's no volume. Otherwise, any other day, the market would be already here. Whoops, all day there. So I'm going to take a light position and see what happens, right? I'm on my trade of come by the way. Normally, I would say put it at session low. We should be filled in now. Yeah, we're filled in. <clears throat> Come on. Bruh. Yeah, so we have an order block. These two consecutive candles will become our order block. Let me just remove everything. Why? Why am I just not using that? Normally, I'll teach you to use the last one. The reason is they consecutive. If you have two red candles, three red candles, you can use all of them. But if you have a red candle, green candle, red candle, you cannot. You can only use the last one. So I'm going to give myself opportunity to use that as a breaker block. And so I would, once the price comes back and breaks this through, through this area, my next eye would be on this volume imbalance and this order block, right? And it should hold the price up. These red three candles are also an order block. Why? Because price went close to close above them. So this just tip, this is just showing that order block is just a change in the state of delivery, right? So you can see that the price the hell is that? You can see that price is respecting the top the start of the order block. You see to the tick. We have this volume imbalance. So this area here is really tricky area. I didn't want to really take a trade today, but we'll give it a shot. So how much are we risking? 14 ticks, which is really not bad. Now I have, I will have my stop loss here, but once we get to this area here, is I'll consider closing the trade or not, right? Right now, still looking good. Dix is pumping. Let's have a look. This is what I was afraid of. So I want us to see, I want us to use this Bullish FEG, yes, you heard me correct. This bullish FEG as a bearish, uh, as an inverse. So we'll use it as resistance. This breaker is also a resistance. This also was uh, a bullish FEG, right? This was a bullish FEG. Sorry, bullish breaker. But since we closed below it, we're using it now. You can see it to the tick as resistance. So I like this stuff. Also, what do you guys notice about this area here? We have a dump. So FEG, 
and then we pumped up with NFPG. So this area here, as soon as we leave it, it becomes a price balanced price range, right? So we should move away from it. So long Dix is dumping and uses as resistance and maybe go to this low or this FEG here. Then we can be good on ES. This is the kind of entries, right? So if you get stopped out on such entries, you shouldn't be sad, right? Why? Because we have a breaker. We have two breakers. We have an FEG. We have our setup, sweep, chosh, FEG. Everything showing the market is supposed to return. Also, remember I showed you... What the hell did I just do? Also, remember I showed you guys on the daily there was a volume imbalance there using it as support. Let's see if we have anything else that to support our price. Okay, I love the way you're explaining. Thanks, brother. So... Using such trades, I don't mind. Why? Because it couldn't get better than this, right? We have the beautiful, the best kind of entries, right? It's just the timing, the market is bad, right? So we have to adapt to such market. The best thing scenario is not to trade. And here we have this bullish FEG. We still respected it. Look at the wicks. We filled it. We repriced the whole thing. Once we leave this, become, this becomes rebalanced. As soon as we repriced here, price went up. Now this is a rebalanced order block. Sorry, breakout uh, FEG. <laughs> But I like what I'm seeing. We took all these sell side here. We came back to this order block. This is the order block. And we had a bullish FEG on the on the hour. And we and we just respected the volume imbalance, bullish volume imbalance on the daily. So everything is in our favor, right? Losing such trade, I wouldn't even care. I would just continue smoking. Oh, I just made my shisha and forgot to smoke it. <laughs> yeah, so I would just come back and smoke my shisha, right? Because it couldn't get better than this. Now let's have once we're in a trade, I always tell you guys, once we're in a trade, you never look at anything else. You never look at breakers, blah, blah, blah. You only look, once you're inside the trade, you start looking, oh, we have breakers. Okay, oh, we have, let's see if there's something, let's say our TP is here. Is there anything that can come in the way? Well, NWG and dog can. So let's have a look if we have anything there. Yep, sky's clear from here, right? Or am I tripping? Yep, sky's clear. End up is really, really far from here. And we don't have anything else above there. I remember guys, we don't have data. We are the top of the market. And now yesterday, you saw how bad it was, right? Everybody got wrecked. It was a seek, seek and destroy kind of thing. But I want to say that now we have news. I think we already had it. Yeah, we already had it. We had news and it did literally nothing. So 5.45 my time. So literally 15 minutes after the market opened, it did nothing. So 9.45. Yep, nothing happened. So you can see any other day, the market would just be so efficient. It would just pump and dump. Right now, it's just chilling here. So I'm just scared that it does the same thing as it did yesterday. But now it comes back to one thing I was going to try and explain. And this is why I don't really want to take longs because we're very bearish. And I was saying that from the start. But why are we very bearish? Well, also on the daily, sorry, on the one hour, we also have this. God, this is so annoying. We have this. One hour FVG, we've been respecting it, repricing the whole the whole morning, and then come back to this bullish FVG, and we're just in this range. So this range here is what kills most traders, right? So I'm gonna be in the market, take my money, and get out, is if I really want to trade or not trade at all. But since we're in a trade, so that's what we're gonna do. All right. So you, you want to recognize this, right? You don't recognize it. You only recognize it just before, after, after you take the trade or before you take the trade. We're just respecting both PDA rates, right? So what do you expect here? This point here is this equilibrium, right? From here to here, probably. Something like the equilibrium. So the price is satisfying both buyers and longers. So longers go happy, shorters go happy. Longers go happy, shorters go happy. Right? So now before I go back to my trade, what did I want to show? Uh, I want to show why I was bearish in today just by looking at the chart. Right away. So I'm going to remove everything here. So here's something called dealing range. Why, what do you mean? What do I mean by dealing range? And most people fail to find it because they're trying to find it at the start. That's not how you find it. You find it after it's formed. So it's easy for you guys, right? Once you see, once it's, you only look for it after it's done. And it doesn't mean you're late to the entry. It just means uh, you, that's where you get the entry, right? So what do we do? We have Asia high, Asia low. This is the, the range we're using. Why am I using this one? Because we took, what is, what is the dealing range? Dealing range means we take the high. We sweep the high, we sweep this, the high of this range, and then we sweep the low of this range. This becomes a dealing, dealing range. Ah, dealing range. I was saying drawing range. So what does this mean is, 
Once we see the high taken and then at the same time the, the low taken, then the market will do one thing. It will pump a little, a little bit. It will pump a little bit to an FPG or any PD array, any insufficiency. For example, what do we have here? We have this FPG here. We also have high, higher high, lower low. So this here is a breaker. Price came back, repressed it to the tick. And it will continue going down. It has a lot of steps. It has a lot of steps like accumulation, manipulation, distribution, but it has a lot, like about five, six steps. Maybe I'll make a video about that. But once we take the high, once we take the low, and we're going back here, respect the PDA, right? That means we're gonna go much low, much, much lower. How much lower? Well, let's have a look. High, low. to the 2.5 range guys right i always teach you guys do it at the chosh right swing off the low swing off the chosh swing off the swing high off the chosh swing low off the chosh you can see we came to one we respected it then we close below that means we're gonna go more down we came back down but since we're leaving all these ranges we have to take into account the whole the whole big move manipulated move this high higher high so this this move here manipulated this high so we can use these anchoring points. Now, if I go on the 15 minute, you'll see it being the same exact thing. So high, higher high, lower low. So this is our anchoring point, right? For once we leave the range. All right, you can see the price came to 2 to 2.5. It's the thing, it's the same thing I did on the five minute. I'm just showing you easier on the 15 minute. We came back here, we had immediate displacement up, right? This is what you want to see. This means we come back to where? To midpoint of the range. So this is what we can scalp maximum. So from the high, from the high to the low, we came very shy of the midpoint, right? So I want us to come to the midpoint. We either close our trade and find support to continue up. But if we reject from the midpoint, then that means we're going to continue going much lower, right? Much, much lower. So I'm going to leave this on the chart. And I'm on the, I know I'm on the five, 15 minutes, but on the five minutes, the same thing. It's the same swing low. Look, I didn't change anything. Here is when you are still in a trade. So not in a trade. So you have a sweep, chosh. And I'm going to show you how we could have taken this entry here. Even though we didn't have an FEG, you could have used this breaker block. It's another advanced entry. And etc. etc. But what I'm trying to say is... Uh, Dixie is dumping as hard. That's good, guys. That's good. But it came to its support. So let's have a look. This should let us go up now. But I want us to take... So you can see, we dumped all the way back to this FEG. That's good movement. However... What's the problem here? Oh. <laughs> Bruh, he's talking. Let me just mute. Uh, all right, so back here. So Dix, I want us to break through these effigies as well. Why? Because these effigies are in the pre in, in the in the discount. These one here are not really important. They can be disrespected because these are eff these are bullish effigies in the premium. How down is premium? From the high to the low. Well, if I should have done the opposites, oops. Just it's so you guys can see the orange at the top. So this effigy I expected to break. This one here is in the prim is in the discount. We broke through it, which is great. So I want us to see if we hold this area here. We have an order block. You can see the price respecting it. The midpoint of this order block is something really important. Oh, let me delete this. This is how you analyze your trade, right? So you want to see. You can see the price respecting the midpoint of this order block. So we're still bullish, kind of. You can see it respecting that. We went all the way down into this FEG to accumulate more orders, but still the body is above the midpoint of this order block. As soon as it closes below the midpoint of this order block, we can expect the price to keep continuing going down. All the way up to this volume imbalance here, which can attract the price really good, cool, really good. But a lot can happen in one 20 seconds, right? One minute and 20 seconds. So we're watching this area here. What you can do is you can go under one minute and see what's going there. You can see that we respected this five minute bullish of Fiji. Where is it? Here. From the start till the end. This is not random, guys. Price doesn't drop all the way from there to the midpoint of this FEG because all people in the world show it. No, this is algorithmic. It's accumulating more orders. And to know that if this is an actual move down or not, we have to close below this midpoint of this order block, which we are doing right now. But the price is still 42 minutes, 40 seconds left. The price can 
absolutely in a second pump all the way back up and close above notice how all the bodies are closing above this here it came back down now which is showing really good momentum like it's really hard to come back all the way back here but we still have 28 seconds guys i have no i have no how can i say this i cannot stress enough how important it is that to wait for the for the candle to close because sometimes you see like uh, remember our breaker block uh, let's go back on es and check our trade this is good see we're good remember what i told you how to do that if, the, if the, the breaker block before it happens right i want you to get used to it so you can take early entries right and then once the price come back to the original fiji you can add another contract right so if if the trade goes without you sometimes you see that we pump we have an fiji chosh a sweep chosh sweep hold on sweep chosh fiji but the price never come back to it well this is how you can enter early and if the price does come back to this here you can add to your position right and your average order will come back much down me leaving you with much more uh, potential to get better better uh, uh, tp and less risk right so what i was saying look low lower low higher high right this green the highest green candle becomes a uh, order block or low low lower low higher high so this green candle becomes a breaker block right Breaker block, breaker block. Sometimes you see the price go up, making higher high. You'll be like, oh, okay, great. I'm going to take an entry here. Then in a second, like happened yesterday. That's what happened. That's how I was, <laughs> I was killed yesterday. The price went all the way back down. It had like three seconds before the five minute candle closed. It went all the way down. It didn't close above this high. So this was not a breaker block, right? So here, what we, if we had another contract, I would expect the price to close at this FEG here. I would probably close here, right? If you guys are in a trade, I would close most of the position here. But Dixie, let's have a look at Dixie. This is how you can manage your trade and see if we continue to keep going up. So Dixie, you close below this five minute fair value group. As we expected, we close below this midpoint. So I told you, if we close below the midpoint of this, we're probably gonna go much deeper. Now what? Now we are at this volume imbalance and this FEG here, right? So here is something with an order block. This, we have an order block, FEG, volume imbalance, God, Goodness gracious, this here is an important area. If we break below this, we can continue going much, much, much lower. So maybe these areas here. So this is here where you can close your trade. If we close above this AS uh, five minute, if we close above it and hold it, we can use it as an inverse. So now right, it's right now it's a bearish right now it's a bearish fair value gap. Once we close above it, we can use it as support. Just like resistance becomes support, support becomes resistance, etc. etc. So I'm not going to close my trade, but I would probably move my stop. But I can actually just close the trade, right? And be content with it. If I had more contracts, I would close, put here. But right now, we're still respecting it, right? The price can absolutely come back down because right now, EA, Dixie is at uh, Dixie is at a really important area that it can start giving a bounce. A little bounce on, on, on Dixie can mess up our trade all the way back to break even and maybe even lower, lower right? So I want to see how we can close here, right? I want us to close fast. So right now we're in, 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 in the 10, 10, 10 o'clock hour. So I'm just going to close the trade. But you guys, if you have contracts, you can hold. Um, I'm going to close it right there. So right now we have, uh, what do you call it? Um, the silver bullet, right? So from 10 o'clock till 11 o'clock, we have a window which if you didn't get an entry here you can use an entry and this is something people get wrong uh the the, the FE, basically the, basically silver bullet is an fvg that is formed the first fvg formed between the the, the am sort of between the 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock and you can use that but that is not correct any fvg even if it was made before 10 o'clock for example this fvg here it's made before 10 o'clock if the the price comes back to it you can take an entry the silver bullet is entry. Your entry at your entry should be within this time frame. If you do it without, if you do it enter here, then it's not on the silver bullet. You're just lucky. We have an FG here. The price came back down here. You can take an entry. So long we between this one hour. Okay? And then you can hold for 10 points. How and that's one, one, one another rule to make a silver bullet correct is you should have at least 10 points. The minimum criteria for a silver bullet is your mask maximum target should be at least 10 points. So let's say this is our FG here. From here. To London high, which is our maximum TP, does it offer 10 handles or 10 points? Yes, it does. 10.75. So here is a good idea to take a trade, right? So you can see Dixie is very bearish. Where's Dixie? Dixie. Dixie is still very bearish, right? 
Now we said this F, this FVG is still holding an order block. So same thing as we did here, we do here. If price closes below the midpoint of this order block, like here, with a Buddha body, that means we can go to this low, this low, and this low, and eventually even more lows. But if we hold this area, then the price can absolutely return all the way back up. It can absolutely do that, right? And you wouldn't be worried. Why? Because it's an important area for that market to do that. Even though we're looking very bearish, Dixie still has unfinished business here. It came very shy of it, just like a few points uh, south of it, and then dropped heavily, right? Let's go back on to ES and let's have a look. So for the people who are still in the trade, your eyes right now, see? <laughs> you see how I was able to leave the, end, the, the trade before, uh, before like right now we entered somewhere around here. Let me have a look. We exited right there. And then minute, two minutes later, the market went all the way back to our break even. So, like I told you, in this market, in this holiday market, you should be only scalping. So now, since the price came back to our breaker block, we can take another long back to this area and just keep playing it. Oh, no, 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 no. $100 back down. $100 back down. $100 back down. It's the same thing as doing one trade $300, right? You can do that. Right now, don't. <laughs> right now, what you want to do is watch the price. Read the price. Does it, does it, does it do what Luke is saying? Does it come back to the breaker block and allow it come back to this area of Fiji? Take $100, come back again. If you see that happening, then next time you can act on it. Right now, your job is just to observe price. Right now, I don't have anything on my chart. I'm just watching. What's the price doing? The price came back to the midpoint of this FVG and immediate rejection backwards. So if I go on the one minute, you can see the huge displacement from this area. Big dump right there. It's not as apparent on the one minute, on the five minute, but on the one minute, great. <laughs> One second, guys. So, <clears throat> I still have, I still believe we will go up maybe. But right now, look what the market is doing, guys. We went high, we went down, we went up, we filled this, F we respected this bearish FEG and the breaker block, bearish breaker block. We went down, we came back up, respected this volume mass, we came back down. We went back up, respected this f PD areas. So right now, every every bearish PD area is being respected. So when you think, if you want to hold longs longer, you would have to wait for the price to start disrespecting the bearish ones, right? This is a secret, guys. Please apply it to your trades. Even though it looks very bullish here, it's this bullish moment. Like I remember, I told you at the beginning, this just looks like to me a suspect rally because Dixie was pumping and we're pumping here. Much market is not symmetrical. That shouldn't happen. So this makes it a suspect rally. What does suspect rally means? It means the market just pumped to fill these imbalances. Imagine you you brushing your wall, right? You have a new wall. You have you have a new wall. Uh, you brushing not brushing. Uh, you painting your new garage door. Okay. Oh, damn, where are you? Oh, there you are. Imagine you, you, you have a door and you're just brushing it, right? So you go down and then you leave some spots in the middle. So what do you do? You come back up with your brush to brush it down, right? To make it all even, right? You can see how even it gets even every, every time I do this. Look, it became more even. Same thing here. The price, it just went down, came back up. It went so f down so fast here that the price had to come back and brush back up. Went back very fast. It left two effigies. So now we just came back up to brush it back off to continue go down, right? And it also makes sense with our dealing range, right? Remember our dealing range? We took the high, we went, we took the low of this range. We went back, oh my God, I shouldn't be drawing. <laughs> so we took the high, we took the low. This makes this a dealing range. Why did I use the Asia? Why did I use anything else? Because this is today and we didn't take the low and the high of London. We didn't take the low and the high of New York AM, sorry, New York PM. Look, the price right here was, well, now it did, but, that's too far behind. But during the morning, we only took the Asia long, the Asia high and the low. And then we went back up. And then here is your last entry to take a long, to take a short, sorry. To where? To, from this anchor point, from here to here or from here to here, to two. You can see it came to two, to point five, and just immediately rebounds back. Till where, guys? Let's have a look where it came back to, right? I'm going to show you why this here is also an important point. And I'm not making stuff up. I'm telling you, before it happens, and now it's, now, remember I told you about the, the, uh, come back once we come back to two to two point five. We come back if we if we reject from there, then we come back to the midpoint of the range. So the equilibrium. Well, we didn't have that yet, but now we do. I'm gonna show you to you right now. But anyway, uh, before I say that, so dealing range, up, 
took the high, we took the low, we came back midpoint, and we show it from here. This was an area here you can show. However, imagine the price, came, we took the high, we took the low, and then this bullish momentum here, it went up and took out this high, then we are bullish. This dealing range, dealing range becomes a bullish one. This is how you can tell. High, low, low and low. Sorry. We went take the high, took the low. We came back a small retracement. So long this swing high, the only swing high we have is intact. This means we're bearish. But if this here, before we form this swing low, if the price is continuing going up, took out this high, that means we're going to be bullish. So we, we can use standard deviations all the way for one to two, all the way at the top, right? That's how we can monetize it, right? Anyway, so remember, guys. We came back to, to 2.5, we had mini rejection. Where do you think we came back to? This guy's, this guy's, this guy's. I cannot, I, I keep repeating the same thing every single time. This is how you use it, right? I, it's easy to say, but we said it before it happened and you could have took a long. You don't just take, you don't take a long based on that. We had our setup of a sweep, Josh, FEG, and you can just target this, F, this, this, the equilibrium and get out. Why is the equilibrium also important? Because we have this FEG. And what does the market do, guys? I always tell you, the market does three things. And I always repeat the same thing, but I'm gonna tell you, to some, tell, you some guy, tell you guys something. Secret today, a new secret source, new gem regarding what I'm writing right now. Bear with me. I don't know. We have a lot. One sec. Right. Anyway, it gets nice. So the market does three things. It runs to liquidity. It rebalances to equilibrium. I don't I'm sorry if I wrote, I'm writing wrong. I'm writing fast. Rebalances, imbalances, right? So what did we do? The market came down, went up, Rebalance to equilibrium. This is equilibrium of the whole range from today till now. Came back to the equilibrium. We rebalanced both insufficiencies. And now the market does what? Now the market runs to liquidity. Does it, did it run liquidity as well? We had these equal highs here. We had these equal highs, relative equal highs here. We took them out as well, right? Now, here is the secret source. And please write this down because it's a very important piece of information. And it's how we can tell the bias. Now, guys, the market does three things. If the market ran to liquidity and it took its liquidity, then what do you think the market is job now? The market will run to filled imbalances. Let's say the market filled imbalances. The market will run to it will run to liquidity. Okay. So this is how we can tell this is how this is the right way to tell the bias. Right. Right now the market did all three. Done, done all three, but if you don't want to count, consider these equal highs, look how many, one, two, three, four. This is on the five minute, if I go on the one minute, you can see that there's a lot of data there. Anybody that was been shorting from the morning, everybody that has been shorting from the morning, hold on, let me remove this. Ah. Everybody that's been shorting from the morning would have Where was that? Huh. Everybody has been shooting from the morning with they will trail the stop loss, right? It's the wise thing to do. The retail will just keep that's the books, that's what the books teach us, right? You enter here, short, movie stop loss when you gain profit, keep going, keep keeping the keep doing that. So this area here has most of the positions, the short stop losses that has started from the morning and it comes all the way from here, right? People keep just trading, hoping for a better day. They're in profit, right? So the way to who are most profit right now, the shortest. So we have to take them out. And this is one of the market. Signal, not one of the market ideology, right? So here, there's a lot of area of liquidity. It's equal, e triple, one, two, three, four, five, right? And these equal highs as well. We didn't take them out, but there's an insufficiency here. So we took them out. So the market did all three things. So now the market, what do you expect the market gonna do now? It's gonna just chill. It done its objective. But imagine the market just, for example, here. Now what did the market do here? The market took these liquidities, right? It ran liquidities. So what do you think the market is going to do now? The market is going to do the only other possible thing, and that is to run to 
sorry, uh, to rebalance insufficiencies. So do we have any insufficiencies here? Oh my God, I have to put my thing on. Remind me guys to put my laptop charger in the next minute, okay? So, uh, here we took the liquidity, so the market will now run to refill insufficiencies, right? Do we have any insufficiencies? Well, on the five minute, we don't really have anything. On the 15 minute, do you have anything on the 15 minute? We have this one, right? We're up here. We didn't fill it all of it. Oh, actually, we did fill it. We did fill this imbalance. So really, the market would, would want to fill NFVG, right? It, it, it will go to insufficiencies and fix them. So it came back here, and now it's filled it. It filled that conclusion. So now it filled the insufficiencies. What do you think the market is going to do? It's going to run to liquidity. It just does one of, or one of the other, right? So this is how you can know. This is how you can use this to your thing. Most of the time, it does all three things. It will end up doing all three things. but. If we took the liquidity without filling a sufficiency, then we can look for insufficiency, insufficiencies and use them as our target. For example, this FEG, that's why I closed my trade there, right? So here, what did the market do? It's just vice versa. The market just keeps doing the same thing. Here we have equal lows, right? Relative equal lows. We swept them. And if you can just say the London session, we just swept the London session as well, right? So liquidity has been taken. So the market will now run to insufficiencies. These two here, and now the market came back down, right? It's not random. It's not random, okay? Now, it might be easier to say, but I always teach you guys in every video these three criteria. Now I told you something new. So if you see the market run to take liquidity, then you wouldn't be expecting the market to run to liquidity again, okay? That would be seek and destroy. And that happens, seek and destroy happens when there is dead volume or there is, uh, or there is news a day before the news. And the day, the same day of the news, but before the news is released. For example, big news days like FOMC, PC, uh, CPI, etc., etc. You will see the market just calm before the storm. That calm will just, it will try to accumulate as many orders as it can take into account both highs and lows. Right? So here, we took these lows, and now we run to fill this insufficiency. The market did two of the things that it wants to do. And equilibrium, we did it as well, right? The equilibrium can take a little time, but most of the time, usually, the equilibrium, the effigies and the equilibrium are near to each other and the way you know this you guys can see my screen by the way right please write in the chat if you can and the way you do this is uh, uh -huh. these things are already done before it's done sorry it's already the algorithm already has these in its code before it happens it the algorithm knows that here it's gonna it's have it's gonna have a dealing range. We don't know that until it happens. Then it has here these insufficiencies, these imbalances are somehow, somehow <laughs> the equilibrium of this range. Right? It's somehow equilibrium to range. The algorithm does this. Yeah, thank you, brother. I'm gonna get the charger now. But you probably can still hear me while I'm getting it. Give me a minute. The the the, the algorithm does this. I don't know if you guys can still see me. My screen just went off. Uh, the algorithm already does this before today, yesterday. It was priced to do a dealing range because there's no volume, so it's going to take both sides out. And so, yeah, we are ready. So that's why I keep saying to you guys. That's why I keep telling you guys, uh, anticipate a price. Don't react to it. We will know what's going to happen. If it happens, great. We can act on it. If it doesn't happen, if it doesn't happen, then it just means that the opportunity is not there yet. One second, guys. Give me a second. All right, I've got my charger now. So everything I said today happened before it happened, right? This is power, right? You don't, you don't, you just anticipate that it happens. And if it happens, great. We anticipated break a block. Great. We anticipated that since Dixie's pump uh, was pumping, so we would expect this is a fake rally. So if it's a fake rally, then we would just expect that the price will go to. You can see me. What do you mean we can see you? Huh? You mean you can see my screen? Oh, okay. I thought you can see me. 
maybe I'll start making videos with me with like with a video camera as well. Maybe later. But um, yeah, so now what do you see? We had the perfect entry, we had a perfect exit, and we're done. No problem, brother. So <clears throat> Uh, any other day, I would probably enter two, three contracts, and that would have been three hundred dollars, and that would be my daily profit for the day, right? Now it's on. I know it's only one hundred twenty-five bucks, but still, that is good in such bad market conditions. I'm teaching you guys how to trade in bad market conditions, not easy ones. No, I'm not just following a trend and say, "Oh, you entered here on this next FEG, and you can just moon to the mo to the top," right? What happens when the market is consolidating as it is now? Look, we're still in the same range for the past two days. You shouldn't be looking at the chart. Just leave it. Come back later. But we still, I know the human in, 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 tendency to, there's a human psychological tendency that we just want to trade, right? And it's Friday, so we don't want to end the day without taking a trade. Can you do that type of analysis on Bitcoin? Sure. Sure, brother, why not? Just give me a second. Please, I hope you guys are recording as well, please. If you guys are recording, awesome. All right, Ziggy, nice point. Ziggy said it's heavily manipulated. That is correct. However, since the ETF are projected to get approved, hope they do, uh, in the first, month, first week of January, then the algorithm will shift to crypto as well, right? The same algorithm on the futures will come there. So I'm starting to realize for the past few weeks that there is nice momentum on Bitcoin, uh, not momentum, there is nice respect of the price action. So let's have a look, right? Let's have a look. If I can find my mouse, I have like six screens. <laughs> Sorry. So BTC USDTP. Let's have a look. Sweep, Chosh, FVG, take previous session high. Done. Here, we swept previous session high. Let's see if we form a Chosh and FVG. Chosh, FVG, price came back to the Chosh, sorry. Come back to this FEG here. There's an FEG here. If you go back in time, Lux Algo will draw it for you. So we have an FEG here. We have another FEG here. So you can see that. Really small one. And we have this FEG here. Guys, I'm going to say something new today. Let's say you have sweep, chosh, but no FEG. <laughs> and we bearish. Well, this, the bullish ones become inverse. They become resistance. They become like a bearish FEG. Price came back and you can see how respect. All right. Remove this. Oops, it's already there. Look how the body is all respecting it. It's not supply and demand. They still work. I'll show you an FEG from, I don't know, from a week before if I can find it. This FEG here, let's say this one here, and this is crypto, it doesn't lose effect. The IPDA, write this guy's down. IPDA for most PD arrays. Um, mm, what do you call it? Validity, IPD validity D range for most PDA range is 20 trading days okay so FEGs blah 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 order blocks if everything is still valid for 20 days for NWG is valid for for eight weeks six weeks no two to three months I think three months okay you can still use this thing all right write that down so if I extend this out you can see that the price still respects it Price came back down. Yes, we can wick down. It still hold it here and then pumped all the up taking New York AM. Price came back to this same FEG, pumped it up. While your eyes is at these FEGs here, for example, these, the algorithm already knows on 26 December, there was an FEG which made the market pump all the way down here, all the way, make all time high, not all time high, like recent high. And it's very discount place. So they'll bring it back here to allow more accumulation all the way back up. So, you see, use these guys. You always, always just look, hold your mouse and just shift it up and check. I know it looks weird with the sessions, but there's always something on the left of the chart you can use, right? Usually we only look for swing lows, swing lows, or bigger features that haven't been filled. 
the FPGs that have been filled are also valid for 20 days, right? Right now, 26 December is only three days ago, right? <laughs> God damn. You sometimes see ICTUs at FPG from Monday for f on Monday, FPG off Monday to trade on Friday, right? So where's Monday? Well, too much, too much back. Anyway, so I'm going to show you that the analysis on FEG is, sorry, on this is also very accurate. So let's have these two standard deviations, right? Swing off the chosh, swing high of the chosh. Let's have a look. Price comes back. Two, 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 and reject from there. It is algorithmic. It's getting algorithmic on crypto as well. Now, if I would take the same thing from this low to this high, you'd see that the price came back to the equilibrium of the range. Most people don't know how to do, draw the equilibrium, right? Or the Fibonacci. I'm just showing you the easiest way, right? The same thing we anchor to, the same thing we end to. So the, end, the end point will be the two. The start point is where the, if the charge is. And you can see the price came back. Look at the bodies respecting. So this is still showing that we're still bullish. This can be a retracement to continue going higher, right? But if we close below the, the equilibrium, find and use it as resistance, but then we'll continue all the way down to the lows. This is algorithmic even on crypto, guys. If I can do this on crypto, then imagine on futures because futures are 1,000 times more accurate. Let's come back to ES and have a look. Or let's come back to Dixie and see what's going on. Please, guys, be recording with voice. <laughs> Full screen. Anyway, so, whoa, Dixie. Dixie made a low. See, guys, what did I tell you guys? If, hold on, remember? If while we're here, we had bullish FEG and a breaker block, remember? Once we close below, I told you guys, we want to use it as resistance. The price came back down. We used this FEG, bullish FEG, as resistance there. Came back down. I told you, we're going to have a little rejection here at the order block. If we are really bullish, we would power something. If we're really bearish, I want us to close below the midpoint of this, F of this order block. If we close below the midpoint of this order block, right here, then we're going to come back to these extremely discounted FEGs. If we close, and this FEG, and we have an order block here. And I said, if we close below the midpoint of this order block, as we did here, that means we're going to come back, to take out this low, this low, this low, and probably this low, and we just did right now. And what else is there? Nothing really much. We have this... We have this order block here and a Fiji. So price might have find really important. It might still chill here, right? It might chill here because this this order block and this Fiji are what moved the whole market, right? So this is the narrative, right? So you guys can see. We anticipate what's gonna happen before it happens, guys. You can just use it. So if we're thinking that if it's close without the bearish, then yes, I'm on Dixie. We don't trade Dixie. Okay, great. We're very, 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 very bearish. And we, and the bearish and the long and the long people, the bull, the bulls have only one more thing standing, one more lifeline. And this is the break, this is the order block here, right? And then you can see, look, it's dumping. Now, if the Dixie shows immediate rejection here and continue up, then that would be just the objective for Dixie the shows and it can continue back up. If we see, as we're seeing right now, really strong movement down, so displacement down, that means ES, all the other things are now free to go pumping, right? What do we see here? Dixie took a slow, ES took a slow. It shouldn't, Dixie, ES should be pumping. So here, this looks like a fake rally. What that might be? Well, maybe since we are still at 10.30, we're still not finished at the 11. Here is when the silver bullet finishes. And this is how you choose the right, correct effigy for maybe a long so. I want to see if this effigy holds and these order blocks right here. So you can use the same thing. Midpoint of this. If we break the midpoint of this order block, then we're going to come back, take out this low and other, any other lows. But I don't expect that. Why? Because ES, sorry, Dixie is pumping. Sorry, Dixie is dumping. So if Dixie is dumping, guys, with strong, displaced, this aggressive candidate, candidate, <laughs> Hold on. Caffeinated candles, then ES, if, e, if, if Dixie is making lower low, ES should be making higher highs. What the hell on earth is it doing? It's trying to take it slow. That is, what's the, what's the contrast of symmetry? Asymmetry? That's the, that's the market is asymmetrical. I will form a, a bearish church as well. So you'd be like, huh, what the hell's going on? Either this is a suspect rally down or it's, or, uh, something else so right now the market is not in synchrony, right there's no synchronization between the two 
you shouldn't be touching anything, right? We would we want to see ES pump really hard from this area. So let's have a look. Our order block is here. We close below this order block, we're gonna take out that low. Right now it's here. What do we do? We go on the there you go, guys. You see? I was gonna go on the one minute and show you that it closed below. You see? It closed below the five minute midpoint of it. And you can see it just worked all the way down. So even though we were looking for a long silver bullet long here at the our FG swing, sorry, sweep, Josh FG. Dixie is dropping really hard. Dixie is dropping really hard. Look, now it's stopping. While ES is dropping too. It shouldn't do that. So you'd be like, huh, I'm starting to feel suspicious. Like my, I don't know, uh, wife cheating on you. You start being suspicious of what they're doing, right? <laughs> Thank God I don't have a wife. Anyway, uh, so, and look how strong it is. So why did the price come back all the way down here? What's down there? Let's go to the left. A fake, uh, Bastion said, beautiful hat. Thanks, brother. A fake rally mean that we back to previous FEG downtrend and keep dumping after. No, a fake rally is if, if Dix is dumping, ES should be pumping, right? But uh, sorry, a fake rally is bullish one. So if ES is pumping, ES should be, uh, sorry, if ES is pumping, not, uh, if SMP is pumping, then Dixie should be dumping. But it wasn't, it was pumping, right? It was bullish. So this just showed us that, okay, this whole move here was just to fill these imbalances to continue the move down, all right? So I always say price never rejects in a random place. So let's have a look. What's, why, why did the price come back here? We have order block and big FPG. This can be a total soup. We went back down, we swept these lows, and now if we get a right strong displacement candle up, closing above this candle high, then you can wait on the earliest FEG, for example, a 15 second, a 10 second, a 5 second FEG, and you can enter like that, and then it would take you there. But right now, I'm not seeing the aggressive displacement that I'm seeing at the moment. So let's have a look, Dixie. Maybe I can, ha I'm just gonna put both of them on, on the chart, right? So we can check simultaneously, it's better than going back and forth. When the dollar dumps, people switch on risk, switch, switch to risky assets to cover normally. Uh, no, it just means, yeah, like do, when dollars dumping, it just means people are taking the dollars out from the banks and putting into risk on assets like ES, Nasdaq, crypto, and etc. So Dixie even formed the bearish, if, 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 sorry, bearish breakable, right? So low, sorry, high, higher high, lower low. This last candle becomes a breaker block. And it's now not dropping anymore. So we don't have the space been down. So ES shouldn't be pumping a lot. I have two Dixies on, sorry. Any other day, guys, once we entered here, we could have hold the order to the top, right? Because with this move with Dixie, the market be pumping. But Dixie dumping means that the money is into ES, NQ, and etc. But there is no money. Why? Because everybody's on holiday, right? Everybody's on holiday. Everybody's on holiday. So they're taking the money out from Dixie to put it into spring break, holiday, vibey, beach clubs and stuff like that. <laughs> so look, market asymmetry. You shouldn't be touching this. Dixie took it slow. ES took it slow. What the hell? What the hell, right? So, yeah. Now let's have a look at NQ. What's NQ doing? NQ still didn't take it slow. We still have SMT. And it's probably going to take it now. What about YM? And it just took it slow. So now we have, this just shows that the, the, if, if all those are taken on all three assets, ES, NQ, and YM, that means that the market is prone to continue going down, right? So what do we have here? Now we're trying to see an SMT between YM, this low, we didn't take it on YM, but on ES, the same low, which is at 9.55. Notice how we close below the midpoint of this order block, so we're going to continue going down most likely. 
and it makes sense because of the dealing range. Up, down, up, continue up. Have a little assessment up, continue going down. It has five stages. And uh, so what was I going to say? Hmm. Was it 950? God damn. Nine fifty five. Oh, there was nothing on there. What about ES? Yeah, there's a displacement. There's a there's a SMT. SMT means smart money tool or smart money technique. It's a sort of algorithmic divergence, not RSI divergence. Algorithmic divergence in the price pricing of all three assets. So you can see the YM is now being the stronger one, while NQ is just dumping like a MF, ES is chilling here, YM is pumping, right? So this asymmetry, which one do you trade, guys? Which one do you do? None. Why? Because Dixie is still, it's, Dixie should be pumping for these to be going down. Dixie should be dumping for these to be going up. Now it's doing nothing, right? There's decoupling from the all three markets, or, or both indices and the, the money, uh, the Forex, not Forex, the, ND, the, the, <laughs> Dollar index, right? So are people just thinking, oh, we took a long, now we're pumping, we're going to take a long. Price went down, oh, we're shorting, our price went up, we're longing, our price went down, we're shorting, our price went up, we're longing. People are getting wrecked. We got wrecked yesterday, right? We have to be, <laughs> we have to be, uh, you have to recognize, right? We recognized that and we lost on it. That's our complete our fault. If we didn't recognize it and lost, that you should be shameful. But if you recognize it and don't take the trade, you should be happy. If you take, if you recognize it and take the trade and lose, then you should be sad. And if you take the, if you recognize it, still take the trade and win, you should call it luck. Okay, you were just lucky. Right place, right time. Nothing else. And you shouldn't journal it as, oh, oh I took a lucky trade. I'm, I'm really like, I suck. Don't. You have to positive, you have to keep a positive image for the brain because your brain memorizes that, right? If you have bad, if you have bad um, uh, traumatic events, you'd all rem always remember it in your life, right? So you want to appreciate yourself. Oh, I know, I know I took a trade. That was, it's probably luck. I'm glad that it did, it did go my way. However, next time I see this, I'm not going to act on it because I shouldn't be doing that, right? I'm lucky this time, but not everybody's, not everybody's lucky every time. So you can see, I told you guys, if you close below the midpoint of this order block, which is our last line of support, it's our last half laugh lifeline, we're going to make new lows. So we took out this low. I'm probably, we're going to, no, I'm too bothered. I'm too lazy to go back all the way to the chart. Coming back down, right? So where can I go, guys? Where can I go? Where can I go? Where can I go? Let's have a look. NWG is pretty far. Pretty far. But it can absolutely come back all the way there, right? It can absolutely come back all the way there. People just think you want to go on club. <laughs> yeah, the super previous session to hunt liquidity as part of your trading strategy. If you look at a long and choice, they go on club. That's where to just do it, trade. No, brother. So if we sweep session low, Josh, if you can take a long, right? If we sweep the high, Josh, FVG, we can take a short, right? If it takes both sides, it doesn't matter. Whatever side last we took is what we base our strategy on. Right now, it's just a bad market because it's a Friday. One, two people are dumping all their positions. Three, uh, Dixie, ES, y NQ, YM are all decoupled, right? They, into, they, they normally go in tandem. They go in secrecy. Right now, they ain't, all right? Especially Dixie. Dixie should be... Pumping for us to be dumping. Right now, what's Dixie doing? Let's have a look. Since we're dumping on ES and Dixie, then that means Dixie must sorry, Dixie must be pumping. As you see, right now we're coming, we're starting to come back to a real market, right? Dixie is pumping, everything else is dumping. Okay, that's a good sign that okay. Now I should be start to look at for trades, right? Now I might be start looking for trades. Right. But remember, guys. Remember. We have a breaker here. We have an FPG. We can use this as an inverse. And we have, an, we have a thingy here, imbalance. So what did the market do? The market took its liquidity. So what's the other thing? The only other thing you can do. See, I'm, I'm making biases every five minutes. My bias, now we're going to go fill these imbalances. And you see, it came back here, right? It can continue to go up and fill this imbalance, right? You have to keep that in mind. But we have to see where we at right now. We're at this effigy right now. I want to see how this behaves. If we close above it with strong momentum, most likely we're going to come back and visit, revisit this one. If we're just stuck here, then... Well, we won't probably go there, right? You can see.
Any questions, guys, in the chat? So notice, guys, we took a trade, and now we're just reading price. We're not wasting time because we're not taking a trade. You're wasting time if you're waiting to take a trade, right? Now we recognize the market. Now we're just learning what the market is doing, right? So yes, so next time, so on Monday, we can anticipate and act on it, right? We anticipated everything today to the tick, everything, on all three, on all, all different assets. Dixie is pumping, ES is dumping. Dixie is, what do you guys think Dixie is still doing? What do we expect Dixie to be doing, right? Still respecting this. Effigy, it's filling it. Now it for, it's from the village effigy, right? On a breaker, so like, what, so which one do we use? None. Why? Because we don't even trade Dixie. <laughs> but here is what you want to keep your eyes. So this effigy has a narrative. This effigy here is important for us. Not this one, not this one. This one, why? Because if we, if we bearish, we should respect it. If we bullish, sorry, if we bearish, we should respect it. And if we bearish and we close above it, that means we're no longer bearish, right? We can anticipate before the market gives us a big ass, excuse my French, a big, big move upwards, right? So let's draw our high, higher high, lower low makes a break, right? But take the high, higher high. This high was manipulated, right? We manipulated, then we continue going down. So this would be our anchor point. For the standard deviations, we are now close below two to two point five. So most likely we can come back to three or four. Most likely four. But we have to check: is there anything important at four? At three, we just close at it. You see, to the tick. The bodies. Look at the bodies. Now market is going down. What's at four? At four we have hmm, not really much. So my market can come back to this low. But like I said, if we take out the midpoint of this order block, which is the last line, li lifeline for us, the market is going to continue taking out most lows. It's going to be low resistance. Why? Because there's nothing stopping the way because Dixie is pumping. Well. And now, guys, we closed. Guys, this. Got me, you. Sorry, Richard. Where's my mouse? Okay, so now what did we do? We're still respecting this, right? We went above it, right? You're gonna be like, you're gonna be like, you're gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna go long. No, you have to get a strong close above it, and it has to do it immediately. Like, what I mean by immediately is in the next two to three minutes or the next two candles, right? Let's go on the one minute. Oh, sorry, I have to draw it first out. <laughs> This is our bearish effigy, which is the narrative. Remember what I told you guys in my videos on narrative? Go back and check it. Every effigy, every order block has a narrative. That makes it work. That's the difference between ICT and any other thing. You can see price came back here, repriced it, respected it. Twigs can wick out. It's all about the bodies. And now we're coming back down. So this rally here, everybody think we're finally bullish. It is not, guys. We thought <laughs> it is not, okay? This fair, this bearish fair value gap here is our narrative to tell us if we're still bearish or not. The liquidity, what does the market do? Does it turns to liquidity or insufficiencies? Liquidity or insufficiencies? Insufficiency or liquidity? It took out liquidity, so now its only job, only job in the in the world for the algorithm is to go reprice or fill rebalance and insuff insufficiency or rebalance and imbalance for those that don't like the word insufficiency, which we did there, and now we continue going down. Well, if Dix is the pumping down and it's still bearish, that means that ES should have finally be going up. It's not. It's continued to go down. I told you, it's going to come back to 4. If we close below 2 to 2.5, which we did right there with a strong momentum, even at 3, we'll come back to 4. All right? Now you might be like, look, I'm, I'm having trouble using knowing which high to use, right? It's the first, the highest high and the swing low. But it's not just a high side, it has to manipulate high. So we have a high, higher high. This swing low becomes important. Or if you just want to keep it simple, use the swing high of the chosh before the chosh, the first swing high before the chosh, no other swing high before here, right here. And then the first swing low, which is right here, after the chosh. You should get really similar, really similar info, right? Not too similar, but still very similar. 
And this one's actually even more accurate than Josh one, right? So we have it. Price came back to two. We closed above it. We closed below it. In one single candle, you can see it. We filled the whole thing. And then what did we do? We went to four. Now, here is an area where really we cannot do anything else. Now, I want to see. I want to teach one more thing today. And it's called... Can I slow down your voice? You speak so fast. Sorry, Martin. Sure. <laughs> You guys can't hear me? Guys, can you guys hear me? All right, sorry, I spoke fast because <laughs> it's, it's, it feels good to know that what's the press gonna do before it happens, right? So I have to tell you guys, keep stressing endlessly, infinitely how important it is, right? So now the market came to four standard deviations. Now it's chilling here, right? It's objective. The market doesn't, is unlikely to go beyond four of its, right? Like from the high to the low, you can just use the other, right? So it's four times this range, right? It's, it's a lot for the market to do in one single session. Awesome, awesome. Now guys, I wanted to try something. This is also something new. This is our dealing range, right? So you can use it from the high to the top. You can still get four standard deviations, all right? This is how far, if you entered here, you would expect the price to come back here. But you can just use the chosh or you can use this manipulated swing high. They all give the same exact answer, more or less, right? More or less, they give very similar answers. Right, so four, four, three, this area here is very strong. Yes, we have another four here. Price come can wick into it, but notice where the bodies are closing. At this area, right? Don't worry about this. This is something extra and it's very, very complicated, but we will get into that one there, right? I have a lot of stuff to teach you guys. But uh, anyway, what was I gonna say? What was I gonna say? What was I gonna say? Huh? Did we get a gap today? And this gap is called opening range gap. And the way we can use it is multiple things. Some things I'm not going to share, but one thing I wasn't planning on sharing, but it is finding the low and high of the day. Do we have any opening up? If not, I'll make another video next day. So today is 29. Yeah, we have a small gap. The closing price on yesterday. The opening price today. I suck at this. What the hell is going on? I'm just testing, guys. One sec. Up it! Sorry, guys. But note this. It's very important. If we are bearish, like I told you in the morning, the high of the day. There you go. That's your high of the day. If you're bearish, that would be your high of the day. And the market is just dropping from there to the tick. This is called opening range. This is, I have over 30 things I can say about opening range, gyms. But this one here is how I am able to find or predict or project the high of the day if we're bearish, the low of the day if we are um, <clears throat> uh, bullish, <clears throat> right? So, the RTH, the regular trading hours, there's a gap. It's easy to see on there. And do we have any other, gaze, other days? Let's have a look. Do we have a gap from 27, 28? We don't have any gap here. Same candle almost. What about any other day? Here. We don't have a gap. Here. What 
well this is the holidays right well but i don't i don't use if there's a holiday in between like between like for example last friday was holiday and last and the monday was holiday so tuesday we started it becomes loses accuracy i don't usually like to try this but i'm gonna try it with you guys right now throw a rectangle fibonacci from the low if we look if we're bullish we would expect the price to go at one two two point five three or four maximum it might go up to one or two of the day right it sorry one or twice the size of the day right you can see it came back to four there and that was the high all right for the whole day let's go back to regular trading hours that's how I was able last time when everybody was telling me the market is just slowing down. Maybe we'll start reversing. No, I told you guys we're going to continue going up. So you can see we made the high of the day here. Oh. Anyway, <clears throat> we'll go into that more later on. All right? But keep that note. Draw it, back test it. Draw it, back test it. All you have to do is draw a rectangle. Tiffy. All you have to do is draw a rectangle at the opening range, which is the closing price yesterday and the opening price today. Draw a rectangle. Where's my mouse? Oh, there it is. Draw your mouse and you can be able to tell the highs and the lows of today. Right now, today was one. That means we were only able to go to one. That means we're extremely bearish, right? If we came back to one and reject, I would expect at least one or twice the, side, the, 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 the range, right? We only went up to one. This shows you that we are so bearish, we're not even able to go twice the opening range, which is a small rectangle, right? Sometimes you get big rectangles, and you can see that's why we have big, big, big movement, right? So everything is aligning, right? Everything is aligning except Dixie. <laughs> so we'll see what Dixie is doing, but we have a dealing range. That was our first tip, though. If you didn't know about the dealing range, what are we doing? We just open a chart. We open a chart at market open, right? I wasn't care what market is opening. I was checking everything with you guys. I didn't check the market today. So what did we do? <clears throat> PDRA, so FEG respected it. FEG respected it. British breaker block respected it. Also, the bodies are inside this FEG, which is also respected. You can see, respected it. We went down. We FEG, these FEG market went to them, respected it. This volume imbalance respected. So everything bearish is being respected. This should be enough for you, right? You shouldn't be catch, waiting for the catch the reversal, right? And this is a really bad day, and this is how it still accurate. Imagine when it's a really good. Uh, market full, full volume market like after the holidays it's going to be a hundred times stronger and more accurate right it's going to be everything's going to be to the tick and yeah we continue all the way down now let's see if we're still at four and that could be so when i say we still close, we close below the four so we'll probably go to five so this means that the objective of the morning session is done you don't you shouldn't be trading wait for pm session the pm session will offer something different all right so What's the, what, what I mean by difference is maybe, sorry, in lunchtime, we probably reverse, right? We probably reverse. And then what we'll try to do is in lunchtime, we're going to hunt stop losses. So this is going to make the market pump, take out anybody that's been very bullish, very bearish, very profitable from the start, keep trailing without getting stopped, like these people here. Now they put the stop loss here. So most likely we come back, take out this. Why? Because we can fill these insufficiencies and take out the liquidity for those who are shorting and then continue going down or just continue reversing from there, right? So where's five? Oopsie daisy. Did we get to five? Nope. Very close. But like I said, four is what you must, what's the maximum you should be looking for? Maybe 4.5 actually, if I put 4.5. And you see, I don't have them on my chart, but I'm seeing why the price is still continuing after four. Oh, stop it. Yep, it came back to 4.5, right? I'm not doing 4.1, 4.2, 4.3. I'm doing halves, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, 1, 1.5. I'll have 1.5 here as well, and you can see that price would probably respect that as well. So technically, now the objective of the AM, we, we rebalanced the equilibrium, we, rebal we took out the liquidity, we took out insufficiencies. Now the market AM session is done with, right? It can go down here, can go pump up. But right now, I would what I would do is, I would come back at the PM session at about, about maybe 1.45, 1.45 New York time. Uh, so just 15 minutes after the lunchtime break finishes. And then I would wait for a setup between 1.45 and 2.30. Also, guys, 
if you missed out on the short, if you missed out, sorry, on the silver bullet in the morning session from 10 to 11 a.m., there's a silver bullet from 2 to 3 p.m., I think. A.m. silver bullet. 10, 11. What was that a.m.? PM silver bullet. People don't even like. I think P. Jones knows. P. Jones is a beast at, uh, at silver bullet. You guys can ask him all your questions. I'm not that. I'm not, I don't use it a lot, but it's good to know if you miss your opportunities. 2 to 3 p.m. Right? P. Jones is here with us. He's an ec excellent anal analyst. Anyway, so you guys can see we can wait for the. For, we'll come back to the market at 145 and we'll check if there's a silver bullet. What I mean by silver bullet is a first FEG. We can take that. Or we can see signs of reversal because the AM session, all the AM session has been, objective in my opinion, has been dealt with. We also took out this low here, which is what started this whole pump up, this whole move, this whole range that we've been in since four days or three days. Everybody does, all these hedge funds will have their stop loss here. They won't even um, move it. They will keep it on. So they're, they're really rich people. They're not really smart money. They're rich people, but they're not really smart, right? They don't move the stop losses. They don't care. If they get stopped out, they don't care. They have millions of dollars. They'll just enter again, right? So they're not smart, but they're, they're very rich. And we're targeting them, right? How does it feel to be the people? How does it feel to be targeting these hedge funds, right? Big institutions. You're targeting them instead of them targeting you. Like, oh, smart money stopped me out. No, you literally stopping them out. We just stopped them out, right? At 4 to 4.5, at 4. We said, I said, I'll probably take out this low and then be content with it. But we also came back to this low. So the market's objective right now is it took out its liquidity. So what do you think it's going to do? One of the other. Rebalance insufficiencies. And essentially, maybe during the day, during the PM session, we'll kind of come back all the way to the equilibrium of the range. So we're going to come back and chill here. What the hell? Where's NDOG? NDOG's NWG is so far. Oh, we're very close to it. What do you think happens if we continue going down? In the PM session, we just continue going down. We're going to come back and chill here. So you can plan your trade accordingly. And the market will come back to this NWG. As far, I don't care how far it looks, it's going to come back here. The price is just pulling it slowly to NWG. Because here is where the market is, uh, can relax, right? All these moves here, it's, it's, it's like on a marathon, right? You want to take a break. You can take a break only at these areas. Once it's far away from this NWG, it's just... Trends, trending, bullish market, bearish market, bullish market, bearish market, bullish market, bearish market. Once you come to the NWOG, it's going to look like this. It's going to look like hell. Come back here. Up, down, down, up, up, down, etc, etc, etc. And you can see this, if this, this NWOG is from 1712. So two weeks ago. Sorry if, I, if I'm not wrong. You can see from two weeks ago. The price is still respecting this, and I wanna, if, I'm going to show you how what I mean by respect. I'm just, I don't mean just passing, just price passing through it. Look at this, guys. This blue line here is the midpoint of two weeks ago opening up. Sorry, a, a new week opening up. Price here, respecting the midpoint. We bearish. We used it as support. Price went up, pumped up, came back down. Respected the midpoint. Remember, they are not, they are not zones. They are uh, reference points. So three reference points, and even you can. Break this down into four reference points. What I mean by that? Zero, 25%, 50%, 75%, 100%. So you can do like your Fibonacci like this. And you can, for example, hold on. Just a sec, guys. Just a sec. Just a sec. Please bear with me because this stuff is important. And if, if you missed out the entries, only the next time the price comes back to it, probably today or tomorrow or Monday, you can act on it. Here's a 75%. I know there's an easier way to do it. Just put 0, 0, 25, 50, 0 0.5, 0 0.75 on your chart, on your Fibonacci, and you can get it. So you can see the price respected this, this zero. From two weeks ago, guys, two weeks ago, price respected that 25% to the tick. To the tick. Look at the bodies. Respect the wick went to the midpoint. Price came back. It opened at the midpoint. It came back to use support of the of the, the 25%. Price went up. It used the 100%. This is the 100%. So the, the, the top of it. 
to the tick. Price went down to the mid to the 75%. Price went down to the midpoint. This is not random, guys. Here, if I extend this out. This here is not random, guys. This is five minute candles. Imagine one minute candle or 30 second candles. Look at this, guys. Look, 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 look. I'm not saying, oh, randomly stop here, stop randomly stop here. It's using two weeks ago gap to the tick, to the millimetric tick of these four quadrants, these reference points, and using them as support. Every time price comes back to them, it pumps. Price come back to them, it pumps. Price come back to it, it pumps. Price come back to it. To this, this is the 75, by the way. Let me just extend it just so you don't tell me. Ah, oh, look, look, uh, they didn't do what you just said. There you go. There you go, please. Here's the midpoint. Let me extend that out for you as well. Because I know you guys love that, etc. etc. Right? Once we close below it, now we use it as resistance. Price went down, it used it the zero point, the zero percent of it to the tick, went all the way down, came back up, filled the whole thing, came back down. Still using it as resistance until we close above it. We use closed above it. Now we're using the top, 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 top. What do you think these are? These are also the same thing I've been explaining. It doesn't mean it's no longer valid, it's still valid, but now for the longs. 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 Etc. 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 Okay, I think I explained a lot of this. So B Jones just wrote in the chat. Yesterday we said massive dog pool and spy. Hold it four seven five seventy five fifty. Hold it today or not soon. We know. Yeah, brother. I remember you talking about dog pools on spy. And yeah, it's crazy, right, bro? It's crazy that P Jones can say something from yesterday and happens today. So. 4750, 4750, 4750. Oh, that's for spy, right? Yeah, probably we'll do that, bro. It's, it's, these dog are really, really annoying. And since they will be offloading their shipments or their profits so they can go pie, it just all makes sense. All right, guys, I think for today, let's see what's the. Oh. For today, there is literally no trade. Don't, please don't trade, right? No, notice how we entered the right time, we was at the right time. And now everything else, nobody can anticipate this move, right? We already know it's going to do it, but we didn't know it's going to do it right away. Maybe for the whole day. So this is, if you guys have questions, I can hopefully, hopefully answer them for you. If not, hope you guys recorded and like, enjoy the stream. And we're going to be doing this every day. Hopefully, if you guys enjoy it and learn from it. Uh, yeah, so any questions, drop it down. If not, I'm going to end it. Da, da, da. No questions. One, two, two point five, two point seventy five, <laughs> two point nine. You're welcome, Jones. All right, two point ninety nine. Hunter, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome, Martin. Miss some of it. Confirm with it. it. Confirm it will be posted to YouTube. I I didn't record, man. I hope someone record. I think Spondy records, but I hope. Someone record it. If you record it, please send it over, okay? And if... I'll see you guys later then. Have a good day.